morning guys and gals. Uh, just out here having a little coffee. Uh, I'm convinced now that the YouTube gods hate me because every time I need to get outside and do some videos, it's raining or threatening rain or the wind's blowing so bad I can't uh, do a video. It seems the wind's died down but uh, it is threatening rain so I'm getting dripped on <laughs> a little bit. Uh, see that's the kind of stuff I go through, you know, to suffer for my craft. Anywho, uh, I was just sitting around this morning contemplating where I'm going to put like a, a permanent bushcraft type camp where I can do a lot of videos and uh, and just do rambling videos like this uh, where I don't want to worry about slamming doors and people talking and all that stuff. Uh, something out in a way, you know, uh, where I won't be disturbed. And I was also thinking how I have not really done a prepping related video since I rebooted uh, the channel. And I thought what better place to start than kind of where I started uh, the first time. And that is with a little item called a blackout bag that I learned about initially from Jack Spearco of the Survival Podcast. I'm sure most of you are familiar with him. If you're not, go check him out. Again, that's the Survival Podcast. But anyway, again, yeah, I keep, keep rambling on. Y'all need some kind of button you can push to get me to shut up and get on with the video at hand uh, but uh, we're going to talk about the blackout bag this is just an old bag I had laying around I don't even remember where I got it now uh, just a cheap bag but that's all you need you don't need anything uh, real fancy uh, but let's get into the contents of the bag okay uh, this is again the bag just a cheap bag before I get started just a quick note uh, what I like so much about this thing if you have family members, uh, wife, or if, if you're the you know the one instigating it, and your your husband is not really down with the whole prepping thing, this is a good way to get people on board because it's something simple, and it gives you an easy chance to be the hero. You know what I mean? Uh, you're sitting around, the power goes out, you have this bag in a designated place, you know where it is, you go grab it, boom, you got light, and now you can see you know your way around and and uh, start taking care of other things that need to be taken care of. Uh, whether that be security measures or, or whatever your case may be um, And that, that's that, again, that's just something simple that people can say oh wow, you know I'm glad we had that bag and that just kind of uh, Opens the door to a, a new way of thinking for a lot of people But Let's get into it. Right, let's see. There's one pocket. Yeah right here this outside pocket over here There's nothing in this one, but I just keep uh, some extra wick for my uh, kerosene lanterns that I have uh, we decorate with them, <laughs> which works out good because they're already sitting around everywhere. And if we need them, we got plenty of fuel to put in them. Uh, and we'll dig into this thing here. Uh, my wife stuck these in here. Uh, I think actually I stuck this one in here, and she bought these and put in there. Uh, but they there they fit just fine. It's just a nine-hour candles. You can pick these things up on the camping aisle at Walmart or uh, REI or Gander Mountain, whatever. Uh, again, those are the the nine-hour candles moving on in here this is where my old the first duty light that I had as a police officer just the old uh, it's not even LED it's the old Z2 combat light but uh, I figured it would be a good place for it as any to reside and I've got uh, four cigarette lighters in here I don't need that many that's just kind of we had a bunch of extras and I just thought well I'll stick them in here see this particular bag has got uh, it's like they were made, <laughs> these little slots were like made to put uh, cigarette lighters, so that's where I, I store a lot of them. And I got, let's see, seven of these little uh, tea light candle things. And I forget now where I got this idea. I can't remember if I got this idea from Jack Spearco as well. Uh, probably did, but I can't remember now. It's been so many years ago. Uh, but they're great. They're really simple. Uh, they're safer than just having a candle just sticking up there, you know, on a, a plate or whatever, like a lot of people do, or even a candelabra. You just you just light this dude up and drop it down in there and set it down, and the glass just kind of refracts uh, the light coming from this, and you get a lot more light out of these than you might think. And when you're done with it, you can either blow it out or just put the top on and extinguish it. Uh, and again, I have seven of those um, in here. You could use a bigger bag and use more if you wanted to. It's your bag. Do what you want to with it. Uh, just a box of uh, strike on box matches. Uh, I have a, a bunch of strike anywhere matches, but I, I, I didn't put them in here. I thought, well, there's, you know, the box is in here, the matches are there. Just striking on the damn box. And and just something, you know, uh, I just got a pack of uh, playing cards here. They were 
I guess it came from the casino. I can't remember how where I got them. Maybe from my mom's sister. But uh, they're drilled, you know, to show that they're not to be used again. But they still work. We're just sitting around playing blackjack or poker or whatever, just to pass some time. But the power's out for a long time. But uh, that's it. And it's just something really simple. Um, and you know, sitting around in the dark sucks. I mean, you know, it just it really does. Um, especially if there's you know children involved. A lot of times it freaks them out. And and this this setup right here is almost kind of makes it kind of fun for them, you know. Because uh, I've had this thing since my daughter was was really young. And when we've used it, and we all know where it is, uh, I don't have to be home for this thing to come into play. My wife knows where it is, and she knows what to do with it. And uh, she knows, you know. Again, there's other things that we can do. I've got some security lighting in there that is easily done. You can buy the stuff at Walmart. I'll be showing you that. But I wanted to get back into a little bit of a prepping vein and start getting some different uh, styles of video out. I am still going to be doing stuff of uh, what I'm doing in the gym. I know some people don't want to see that. Um, some people might be interested in it, but it's something I do. And I think uh, when you start talking about preparedness, uh, I think preparing yourself uh, mentally and physically is a huge advantage. So I think it's something everybody should consider. So, uh, but that is the, the blackout bag. It ain't got to be one of these sexy police bags, okay? It can be just whatever you want. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. Okay, the blackout bag. Trust me, guys, it works. Um, again, uh, just restating what I said before. Um, this is a great tool to almost subliminally <laughs> uh, open someone's mind uh, to a preparedness mindset. And I'm, when I say that, I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, zombie apocalypse. I'm talking about just probable things like power outages, ice storms, uh, tornadoes, whatever the case may be. Uh, don't freak people out, you know, and a lot of times that's what turns people off on this stuff is you, you, you come out of the gate hitting them with this zombie apocalypse, oh, people are going to come take what we got. Granted, yeah, that, that is uh, <laughs> a possible uh, scenario, but you're not going to get people on board with that. The scare tactics I've found don't work, and that's why I, God, I, I get really tickled watching uh, or seeing these advertisements on places uh, that sell emergency preparedness food, long-term food storage, uh, like Mountain House, different things like that. I mean, they're they're using scare tactics, you know, to sell their product, and uh, must be working for them because they're still in business. But uh, I just don't I don't like to take that approach. Usually, once you get somebody's eyes opened uh, to the possibility that everything is not always going to be as it was yesterday, then uh, the rest of it will just come in time, you know. Uh, once they see the, the need, okay, yeah, I, I see why this would help us to be able to have a, a quick means of getting some light in the house so we can see what we're doing uh, in a power outage. Well, you were prepared for that. It went well. It was no longer an emergency. Uh, like my old tagline in my old videos, uh, if you prepare, there's never an emergency. I just, I, don't, I didn't use that this time. I just wanted to use my name instead of Kentucky Lake Prepper. But, um, I did leave it at the, in the, the video intro. People seem to dig that. So, and a lot of people still call me KLP, which is cool. Um, but enough. I could sit here and go on and on about the preparedness, but we'll save that for a bunch of other videos. Guys, I thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.